Hi there, welcome to this edition of PMAT Live. Today I am going to do a fondant tutorial. I'm going to cover a cake. Here's said cake. Notice it has a thin layer of very flavorful frosting on it. I'll talk about that in a little bit. You need your fondant a ruler, um, some sort of a rolling pin. You can use a straight one. This happens to be a tapered French model. Whatever you're most comfortable with, it doesn't really matter. A fondant smoother for once you've got your fondant on your cake. Although, honestly, you don't even really need this, but um, it is helpful. So um, consider investing the two bucks that it costs you to get one of these at the craft store. You don't have to color your fondant, but um, I've got a couple of colors here. I've got a green and a yellow that I'm going to do sort of a marbleized kind of effect on the um, fondant just for fun, because I can. And um, this little guy, I'm not even, it's, it's kind of a sad looking little affair here, but what it is, is um, you can use cheesecloth. This happens to be one of those handy wipe, reusable kind of washcloth jobbies that you can get at the grocery store. It's got all kinds of little holes in it. And the um, what's in here is just some cornstarch. And cornstarch is what you need to keep your fondant from sticking both to your rolling surface and also to your rolling pin. It'll give it a nice matte finish. Some people use powdered sugar in here, but since the fondant already has so much sugar in it and it's hygroscopic, it tends to draw moisture to it. Adding more sugar on top of sugar is probably a little too much of a good thing. So if you want to keep your fondant nice and dry and still keep it from um, sticking, just go with cornstarch. Um, and you're not going to have a thick layer of it. Then you'll take a brush. Oh, where's my brush? I meant to get that guy out too. Some kind of a pastry brush to brush the excess cornstarch off with. And that's really all you need. Before I go crazy with this stuff, I'm going to go ahead and do some little cornstarch all over my work surface. Okay, now my cake, I baked it in an 8 by 3 inch pan. Let me show you. Okay, so we have 8 inches across the top, and then 3 inches on either side. So in order to cover the whole cake, I need 3 inches plus 8 inches plus 3 inches, which is 14 inches. So I'm going to look for probably a 15-ish inch in diameter circle to make sure I have plenty to drape over the whole shebang and cover it in one fell swoop without having to do some kind of crazy patchwork business. So, okay, so we've got that. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, though, before I start rolling anything out, is I'm going to take roughly half of this fondant. So the first thing I'm going to do is just sort of knead this fondant to soften it up a little bit. So notice, notice I don't have my rings on. Um, you don't want anything that's going to dent your fondant. You're looking for a pristine and smooth surface on which to do more decoration or, or not. But pristine and smooth are your buzzwords when working with fondant, especially if white. I mean, if you're going to go with white fondant, it'll show up every little speck of anything that gets in it. Here is the fondant. It's much more pliable than it was. It kind of feels like um, a little bit stiff Play-Doh. What I'm going to do, because I said that I wanted some color in this, is I'm going to add color with a toothpick. These are just gel colors. And my um, frosting, the cake is a coconut flavored cake. And the frosting is key lime. And so some green and some yellow together will sort of give you that kind of citrusy, limeish type feel to the cake. Even though it's not adding any color, it sort of primes your palate to expect something citrusy. So, you see that's not a lot of color. You don't need a lot. The stuff is really concentrated. What I'm going to do 
is just take this, fold it over, and then fold it over again. And then I'm going to twist it and fold it. And twist it and fold it. And then I'm going to start rolling it. And you'll see the colors come out. There you go. If there does happen to be any kind of little speck that gets in to your fondant, now is a great time to get it out. Okay, also as you roll, do this in pretty good light so you can see. I don't know that you're going to be able to see this, but in my light I can see some little air bubbles. Poke them with a pin, get rid of them. You don't want little air bubbles in your pocket. Okay. Notice I'm not doing anything special to make this um that color marbleize any more than it already is. If you would like more color, then just knead it a few extra times before you um, before you start rolling. Looking for a thickness on your fondant of about 3 sixteenths of an inch. Too thin and it tears, too thick, and it starts to look like kids work. So you want to be able to see the shape of the cake really well under the fondant. So now what I'm doing, I'm going back, I'm smoothing this out, touching with my little hands. To see where it might be a little thick. Let me measure it. That's 12 inches in the center there. So we've got 12 that's 15 inches right there. Okay, just for fun, I'm going to turn this over and see what the design is like on the other side. I might like it better. And then before you put it back down, just dust it. Hmm. Well, as you can see, there's color on the outside. This is good. This would be on the side of the cake, and some of this would actually be cut off. So I believe I'm going to go with the other side. Okay. Move this over, out of the way. Here comes my cake. Um, like I said, the cake is coconut. The um, frosting is very tangy key lime frosting. As I said, the fondant is not necessarily the most flavorful thing in the world, so you want to have a really kind of boldly flavored frosting underneath it to kind of balance it out. Um, I also generally take a page from the um, Walt Disney World playbook and before I actually serve the cake I just peel off the fondant um, or tell people to peel it off because um, it's really not that tasty. It's just a really nice smooth surface. Okay, so I'm just going to plop this down on my cake. My, the first thing I want to do is make sure that the top is really smooth. Okay, that feels good at least for right now. And now the whole idea is to work this down from the top all the way down without getting any wrinkles or creases. It'll get fine, fine cracks in it, sort of looking like, um, oh, like if you haven't used lotion or something, <laughs> it gets a little, just fine, fine cracks in it. Not necessarily the most beautiful look for a cake. Um, if you're going to do this, make sure your fingernails are short. Alright, so see I'm just kind of finessing this down. 
my little hands. Once I get it all the way down to the base, I forgot to say you might need a pizza cutter. You can use a knife, but pizza cutter works really well too. Just take it. Can you guys see that? Hold the pizza cutter still and just move your turntable. no frosting on this excess, you can certainly fold it up and save it for later. Just wrap it really, really well now. Once you have your cake, you can be done. This is fine. People will ooh and ah and think you're spectacularly gifted. So this is fine. But if you want to make it even better and smoother, take your little fondant smoother, this is what it's for, and really, really press it out. It just keeps you from, gives you a nice finished coat so you don't end up with fingerprints in your fondant. To have your cake look as professional as possible, even if you're not a professional, pay attention to this top edge. You want it to be as round and as precise as possible. You don't want any kind of schlumping don't want any kind of divots or dents. So, with a firm hand, I really am kind of pressing reasonably hard. Just want to finesse that edge. Look at it. You can see right here, see there's a little bit of a crease here, a little bit of a dent. Like I said, you want it to be as professional looking as possible. Dent, you're vaticated. Alright, now if you'll notice, there's a little bit of frosting down here. I might have cut a tiny bit too high when I was using the pizza cutter. That's okay, you can clean that up just with a paper towel or even like a little palette knife, get rid of that. And then normally what I do with a fondant cake is either make an, a fondant ribbon to go around the base or just use regular ribbon. So either way, you can certainly camouflage any sort of little imperfections that are at the bottom. You see here that there's a little bit of a crease here. Now if this were higher up, what I would do would take some Crisco or actually have some coconut oil. Let me see if that will work. Just to let you know if it will or not. Grab some coconut oil. Just the tiniest little bit. And kind of work that back and forth right along that little crease. those things some people are allergic to, so please don't do this unless you know the dietary restrictions or lack thereof of everybody that you're going to be serving this to. Um, generally, when you're working with fondant, you're just talking about using regular shortening. It's not gone, but what you've done is given the fondant enough slip to um, be smoothed out so you um, camouflage those little imperfections, those little seams that you might have. Right. And then from this point, you can do, you can leave it like this. Like I said, you know, why not? It's pretty, it's simple. You can decorate it with some lemon and lime slices, but you want to do that right before you serve it because like I said, the fondant will draw water to it and you don't want it to get sticky and gooey but you can also cut out any kind of shapes out of whatever color fondant you want. You'll ro roll those shapes thinner, probably about an eighth of an inch, and then just apply them. Um, you can use even just a little bit of water or the tiniest little bit of powdered egg white mixed with water as some glue. You could use a little corn syrup. Um, 
and just do appliques all over the top or just in strategic places and also on the sides. Okay, so that concludes the tutorial part of the activity. I wanted to let you know that I got the um, basic cake recipe from Carol Walter's wonderful book, Great Cakes. Um, it's a standard one, two, three, four cake, which is a very old fashioned cake. Um, one cup of butter, two cups of sugar, three of flour, and four eggs, and then of course leavening, um, milk, and any kind of seasonings you put in. So it's very basic, very easy, very, very tasty. It's um, kind of a cross between a butter cake and a pound cake. It's, um, it's very firm, it's got a tight crumb. The only thing that I did differently than her original recipe was I subbed out um, coconut oil for half of the butter and I used um, half and half coconut milk and regular cow milk for the dairy. I also increased the salt, um, almost doubled, and it probably still could use a titchy little bit more salt, but that's, that's just me. Okay, so that's really the only difference that I made. It was, it's a very mild flavored coconut cake, so we've got a very zingy um, key lime frosting on top of it. I will post links to the frosting recipe down in the, um, in the description section. I wanted to take a minute to say hi to somebody that I have really enjoyed getting to know on Twitter. Um, her name is Maureen and she lives in Australia, which is very, very far away from me in North Carolina. Um, she blogs at Orgasmic Chef and also she and her husband are the masterminds behind the amazing easy recipe um, widget or plug-in that I use to um, post the recipes so you can print them separately from the rest of the blog post. She and her husband did all that sort of magical code that allows that to happen. Um, I told her that I would say hi to her in this video, so hi Maureen. Um, thank you so much for your support. You are wonderful. Um, all right, that takes care of this. I hope that if you have been a little intimidated by trying fondant that this um, little tutorial lets you know that it's really not that difficult. I haven't covered a cake and fondant in years, years. So if I can just pick up and do it, you could certainly pick up and do it too. So I hope this has been helpful. Again, I'll post all kinds of links plus links to um, Maureen's blog down below. If you've not met her, you should. She's delightful. All right, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye-bye.